Once again, another show has been cancelled despite the fact that it is actually something good and genuinely creative. So in an effort to raise some awareness for this show and to hopefully bring about enough attention to support a streaming platform to bring it back, allow me to introduce to you the wonderfully alien world of Scavenger's Reign. This is a show that is very much alien-like in every sense of the word and possibly one of the better representations of what it means to be a true science fiction universe. It is set in a completely other earthly universe with a group of humans stranded upon a foreign isolated planet, which might seem similar to Earth on the surface, but is actually filled with so many different elements and creatures, each more alien-like and unknown than the last. This might be why I think the show didn't do as well because, well, it's genuinely alien and really nothing like I've seen before. And admittedly, I, at the first episode, was wondering what the hell is going on and things to me just felt far too alien-like to be relevant or enjoyable. I mean, Yes, there were humans trying to find their way around this strange new planet, which is cool and exciting, but damn, things just felt too weird and also kind of slow. It was lulling me into this universe gently, but it just felt a bit too unhurried and relaxed, and perhaps was more of a sign of my own attention span and impatience. But what I did find fascinating was the art direction and the world itself. I couldn't fault any of the animation, and moreover, after that first episode, the story picked up the pace and suddenly I was finding myself more and more invested into these stranded human beings, trying to find their way back home and navigating all these interesting and dangerous alien obstacles. And by episode 3, I think you'll hopefully too find yourself just being put into awe of seeing how they've come up with all these differently unique and interesting intricacies for how the creatures operate, how they survive, and the way these ecosystems combine together to try and survive in this weird, wonderful world. And man, some of these set pieces and scenes within the show are just incredible. One of my favourites comes from episode 3, where you just watch one of the protagonists stumble across a seemingly innocent enough flower that actually expands itself to reveal a whole life cycle for the creatures that actually live within it. And I don't even know how else to explain it. It's got no dialogue and it's all done with incredible music and visuals as you just watch, like her, be incredibly flawed by what's going on. I mean, to think about how this little universe is created and what the look of these creatures are and how they function just within this one flower is really a greater representation and testament for how all of the other creatures in this world operate and how well the creators have done to think about the design of everything that's on there. Whether you like the oddity or still feel like it's too strange for your liking because yes it is completely science fiction at its core you can't help but appreciate all of the creativity and thought put into this world of this show like it's genuinely you watching the creative minds of the writers and animators being put onto display as they use their imagination to think about the color the look the design, the world, and ultimately the rules of how this universe functions. Even if there are things still left unclear, which a lot of it still is, that's kind of the charm also because not everything has to be explained because maybe it can't be. And secondly, it's there for you to interpret and think about how they operate and how these weird creatures function. I'm also downplaying how kind of dangerous and disturbing some of these creatures are and with what actually happens in the show itself. It's not R-rated by any stretch, but man, some of the scenes in here just feel so messed up, not only from, say, a physically violent point of view, but especially from an emotional and mental manipulation point of view. I'm talking mainly about one creature in particular who uses telekinetic and telepathic abilities to psychologically manipulate people into doing its bidding, and man, is it ever, ever so messed up. But there's also some really other interesting characters that hunt in horrendously brutal ways, and some others that seem to touch upon deeper philosophical questions where they try and bridge the gaps between what makes things sentient and what does it mean to be human or to feel pain or even have emotions. It's really a handful of crazy things being blended into one, but at the same time, it touches upon those very humanistic elements and relatable themes such as sentience, consciousness, the exploration of the unknown, and what it takes to survive in a strange, unfamiliar world. One of my other favourite elements about the show is how they split the story into three main sub-story lines that collectively are all guided by this one main goal, which is all about getting these stranded human explorers back to their ship so that they can escape from this planet. It sounds kind of dumb and simple, but whenever you actually give your characters a basic goal to accomplish in your story, it's just a great way to tell a story or at least have a good structure for the story to follow on, which then can be broken up into watching these characters accomplish said goal in different steps and in different parts. So long as it's never being dragged out, this can be a simple but interesting way to build up the stakes throughout the plot, introduce new and creative settings or even characters, and altogether take you on 
this adventure journey in a nice, easy way. Which can also be further strengthened when you have such scenes being split up with A and B, or even C side stories that can be interchanged back and forth to always keep you interested in the overall episode. Whenever things get too boring in one story, you can then switch to the other one and vice versa. In the process, always keeping things interesting and fresh. It's the good old, meanwhile back at the ranch type of storytelling. Scavenger's Reign does all of this so well, and it's one of the few times I've seen three sub stories being blended into one another that genuinely made me interested in all of them equally. I mean, I also do have my favorite one with seeing what happened with Cayman and his creature that was just disturbing and horrifying, but the other two stories of Levi and Ozzy and Ursula and Sam were just as interesting in their own regards, with some really messed up scenarios and beautiful set pieces to go along with them. If a show or movie has done a great job of writing a story with some good fundamentals like this, I think it's always worth just pointing it out in an effort to recognize and appreciate the writers for doing so. There's clearly been some care taken to ensure that each episode, despite it being in an unfamiliar world and dealing with very strange situations, nevertheless follows a structure and a way of prose that is still recognizable, relevant, and really engaging to watch. There's a bit of a rhyme and pattern to follow, even amongst all of the weird chaos. Which leads me to the ending of the show that, as much as it concludes this season in a fairly satisfying way, with one of the craziest sequences from the whole season altogether, it still feels like a conclusion that has been written as a setup for the future, and that there is still so much more to find out when it comes to what will happen to these characters. I wasn't left annoyed at the ending because there were answers provided, but at the same time, it just felt like things hadn't really ended, and there was still a lot more story to be told. So hopefully, you've been interested by what you've seen in this video to see the show for yourself, and enough so to hopefully raise further interest in the show's future altogether, to perhaps even recommend it to other people that you know, so that eventually, a potential streaming platform who has seen and increased interest in the show will decide to bring it back. Because despite all of the terrible movies and shows and generic pieces of cash grab sequels, reboots, remakes and whatever else similar to it, there are still some genuine diamonds amongst the rough and some wonderfully talented individuals who are focused on championing new and original works of art such as this. And I for one would love to see more of these being produced in the future. Scavenger's Reign sets the example and standard for why modern animation and indeed any kind of show should still aspire to, and I hope that it continues to tell its weirdly wonderful fascinating story someday soon.